Cornish walking trails today. We're here in the pretty village of Flushing. In our video today, we will be asking... So what would you do for love? Sarah, I think you asked, what would you do for love? So the love-struck couple were Miss Joan Beach and Captain uh, Wheatley Cobb. Today we're following a circular walk which includes a train, a ferry and a walk. The walk instructions suggest you start at Penryn train station, but being circular, we wanted to start at Falmouth and take the train first. Oh, oh. Our walk starts with a little short train ride. It's a couple of stops on the Truro Falmouth branch line. Are you finding the walk today? <laughs> so we're here. We're in the little station of Penryn. It's made to start a walk, actually, it isn't is. it? It is quite relaxed. Yeah, isn't short it? little uh, train uh, journey. So where are we heading today, then, sir? So we're going to wander through Penryn. We're going to go to Penryn Church. Never been to Penryn Church before. St. Glevius it is. Mm -hmm. Quite looking forward to that. We're going to pick up the riverside walk all the way down to Flushing. Flushing is an exquisite little village. It's beautiful isn't it? Then we're going to catch a ferry to Falmouth. Nice. Where our car is parked. So it's like a circular walk but involves a lovely little train ride as well. It's got a train and a ferry. Yeah. What could be better? And walking. <laughs> Come on then. So we haven't got a walk book today. We haven't. We're going to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are following a guided walk. It's from a, a magazine though, Cornish Life. So we're going to follow the instructions. First instruction says exit the train station and cross the road. We've got to look for a flight of steps next to a black waste bin. It's a black waste bin over there. Oh! <laughs> it looks like they're shut though. Must be that way. Let's go and have a look. Okay, this doesn't look good because we're meant to be taking a flight of steps next to a black waste bin. Hmm. There's a big barrier. <laughs> okay. It's slightly annoying. Yeah. <laughs> right. Back we go to Falmouth. <laughs> Let's go find a coffee shop. All right, well, we know We know Penryn. roughly where we go, so I reckon if we go, go up the road, the road turn and turn left, left down the road, the road. yeah, okay. Very shortly, we'll be joining up with the main street that goes down through Penryn. Penryn is one of the oldest towns in Cornwall. It's lovely, loads of granite cottages. And these days, with the university, it's quite a big university now, it's quite busy in the winter, quieter in the summer months when the students aren't here. Penryn, the town of granite. The pavements and walls are made of it. Streets of granite houses run steeply up the creek from Falmouth Harbour. Penryn packs a punch in terms of both historical and present day importance. It predates Falmouth by several centuries, being mentioned in the Doomsday Book, but its true potential came when Bishop Brunscombe of Exeter founded Glasney College in 1265 as a centre of ecclesiastical power. Cornish language miracle plays originated here, including the Ordinalia. The dissolution of the monasteries by King Henry VIII put pay to its power and Glasney was looted and destroyed, its granite taken to build Pendennis. Today, all that remains are some brick paths showing the outline of the old building. So can I just say that our walk today is going to be focused mainly on Flushing, which is where we're walking to. We've been to Penryn before, we made a video about Penryn, didn't we? We went on a town trail around Penryn. Perhaps we can leave a link to that at the end of this video. We'll so we've made loads of videos around Falmouth as well, so perhaps I'll put a playlist together of our Falmouth-related videos on as well. Oh, that's a promise, there isn't it? There we go. So we're now looking for Truro Lane. Is this it? Yes, Truro Lane. Look at the pretty little cottages. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, they're the signs that it's open. Yeah. 
there's a great big huge padlock on the gate up here, um, isn't there? On the door, so we can't get inside. I know what we could do whilst we're here. Yes. Do you want to play the favourite game of the um, most interesting gravestone? Yes, let's do, we, we that. do that. Go on then. Want the old ones? Yeah. They're normally closest to the church, aren't they, the really old ones? Where are they too then? Mm -hmm. It's quite spooky. You've got the heavy draped yew trees and the rooks crowing, haven't you? And um, the faint rustle of the leaves. <laughs> it's the wind. grown as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. want to be here at night. God, no. Oh. What have you found? These are older up here, that one's 1830. Okay. I see what's on this back wall here. Oh, though. wow, yeah. Gosh. So there's memorials actually in the wall. I've never seen that before. Yeah, We've been in a few graveyards now, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I hope there's actually physically nothing in behind there. Big hole in that one. Yeah. Ugh. Imagine. <laughs> Hand comes out like thriller. <laughs> Actually thinking about it, the only other place that I've seen memorial tablets set into a wall is actually in Falmouth in the churchyard. But that's because they actually ripped out the churchyard and reclaimed it as a public park. So then they put memorials into the new wall. Oh, that's open. Oh, you're not looking in there, are you? Oh, I don't want to look in there. Beer cans and milk bottles in there. Oh, oh, uh, no, I don't like this. No, I really don't like this. This is making me feel uncomfortable. I don't want to get out of here. How do I get out of here? Oh, oh gosh, there's another one falling apart. Yeah, this graveyard is in quite a bad state of repair really isn't it? Oh now that's an interesting one isn't it? That is isn't it? 1745 aged wow. 53. I can't even read Phillips. it. Stephen Phillips. Oh yeah. It's actually been carved very very well yeah. hasn't it? It's in the nose, very really triangular. <laughs> Got the teeth there as I well. Skull and crossbones Andrew. Looks a bit sinister doesn't it? So people often confuse these sort of gravestones where there's a skull and crossbone. They automatically think it's something to do with pirates or something like that, isn't it? But from what we can gather, this was just the style of them, that mid yeah. sort of 1700s sort of style. That's just right. Just to sort of show that someone's passed and they've died, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. A whole, whole host, a whole family in here. This is quite interesting. It's very, very neatly laid out like a table, isn't it? So mm. you've got Edward and Sarah Lavin and well they they live to a good old age 81 and 69 yeah, and then you've got michael and mary similar sort of period they were a lot younger the children of those two you've got elizabeth who was 13 edward who drowned at port elizabeth just at the very bottom it just says infant children of michael and mary lavin but they don't give any names dead but not forgotten oh my goodness like the whole parish register on its own. Okay, so that is an interesting gravestone for me. There's two there. One was very, very sad memorial to an entire family. And that one with the skull and crossbones. I do like a wander around a gravestone, a graveyard. So let's carry on with our walk now. We're gonna pick up the creekside walk that takes us to Flushing. I'm very glad to be out of that spooky graveyard. Walking down beside the river, we're on the opposite side to the main road between Penryn and Falmouth and it's completely different. The traffic noise is just a gentle murmur on the other side of the creek and you've got other noises now like people working on their boats. Oh, wow. Perhaps we're, perhaps we're on a lucky, lucky trend now. Loveland. Of course, our video is titled, What Would You Do For Love? Should we go and find out? <laughs> go on then. Oh, it's narrow. It just looks like a field. Yeah, it's just... Oh! There's sunflowers. 
up there. Yeah, sunflowers. Oh, I do like sunflowers. They do make you smile, they do. don't they? Let's go up and have a look. This is the Sunflower Project, supporting communities to creatively grow. smile on your face doesn't you it? You just love it when we stumble across something as extraordinary as this. You don't expect it do you? The rest of the, of the field is thistles and yarrow and you've got this patch of absolute joy. It's beautiful isn't it? Yes. The bees are loving them. So Sarah I think you asked what would you do for love? I did. You did. And so about a year ago, I commissioned them to do this for us. Rubbish. So I knew we were coming out to do this walk at this time of the year. I don't believe and, you. And I, I, I asked them to do this, especially for you. Oh, that's very romantic, Andrew. There we go. <laughs> All softy, really. So I'm sure I saw online recently, I'll have to go home and check now, but um, there was, I'm sure there was a farmer, an elderly farmer, and he decided to put over a field which he would normally grow crops in. We're celebrating our 50th wedding anniversary, August 10th, and uh, you know, what's a guy get his gal on their 50th? And I, I put a lot of thought into it, and she always liked sunflowers. And I thought this is the year to plant sunflowers, so we planted her 80 acres of sunflowers. Make it feel very special, and it's it can be a more perfect anniversary gift. Oh, that is lovely! So who says romance is dead? Oh, and the bees are absolutely loving it. I bet I can't find one there because he's just ruffled them all. But yeah, they're in there, just supping on that nectar. Oh, beautiful! What a delightful thing to stumble across. Sarah, yes. can I just say that this looks like it might be a reed swamp? <laughs> and that is really relevant to today's video. So Flushing hasn't always been called Flushing. Its Cornish name was Nankersey, ah, okay. which means... <laughs> reed swamp. Indeed. It may well be that Flushing more resembled this before At one time. it was developed. I, yeah, yeah. I love the noise the rushes make. This is going to be a terrible one show link. Do you enjoy reading? <laughs> yeah, everybody that watches this channel knows that we do a lot of reading of old books, which leads us in very nicely to something else we want to talk about today. The video today is being sponsored by Readly. Now they've got a superb app that you can download and it's got 7,000, something like that, 7,000 publications, magazines, newspapers that you can access for a monthly subscription. And we've been looking at it recently. I think Andrew's going to come and help me talk about it now. So whilst we were on the app, yesterday even. Yeah, so the walk we're doing today, I actually found by using the Readly app. Yeah. So uh, I was looking through the um, one of the editions of Cornwall Life and it wasn't actually this month's edition, it was the month before. Yeah. And they had this walk, sort of Henry and to, to flush in, so that's what we're using today. So it's inspired this walk and it's been really useful hasn't it? The app is really easy to use. It is, yeah. It also means that we've got it on our phone, we haven't got a bulky magazine with us, which is also environmentally friendly. And it's a bit like Spotify and that the more you use it, it's kind of clever. It then suggests things that you might enjoy reading. So I was looking on there last night because I'm actually interested in getting a new pair of walking shoes and the uh, Country Walking magazine that I found was on yeah. there so I was having a little look at that and also these cameras that we use for our, our vlogging. <laughs> they've seen better days haven't yeah, they? I, I was looking at some of the photography magazines as well because um, they've got reviews of the latest cameras and that sort of thing on there so oh, I was having a look at that. Well whilst you were doing that I was actually looking ahead because obviously the winter evenings are not far away are they we're getting towards the end of august beginning of september and i was looking at the knitting magazines yeah <laughs> 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 i do like like doing a little bit of knitting yeah. <laughs> so if you're interested in the readly app 
go to our description, there's a link there that takes you to readly.com. Yeah, and you'll get your first two months completely free. Yeah, you've got nothing to lose, really. I mean, two months free. You're going to have great fun looking at this app. These reads are amazing, aren't they? Reads, Readly. Oh, <laughs> we did this in the right place, didn't we? <laughs> oh, we did. So, yeah, readly.com forward slash Cornish Walking Trail. Start your free offer. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Oh my goodness me, that is a rotting hull of a boat. It looks like a bit of a ship's graveyard here. It's called Sailor's Creek. I can't see many of these being sailed. Gosh. That looks like some marine quality ply. As if they're trying to salvage this rotting hulk. Goodness me. Oh. <laughs> it's even even dripping out of the hull, isn't it? Fancy buying a boat? <laughs> I'm not even giving you a pound for that. You know our theme is romance. Oh yeah. What have you got? Would you like to share a packet of Rolos? <laughs> I'm into Rolos at the moment. I'm going. What's that word when you're retro? That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Would you like a Rolo? I would. Oh, thank you very much. Very nice. Mm. So, what's the most romantic thing that you would do? That is the question of today's video. And in a moment, when we get to Flushing, we've got a fantastic, absolutely most romantic story. When Andrew told me about it when he was doing his research, I just went, oh! But you'll have to wait till the end to find out. Can I have your last roller? Yeah. So flushing came about because the mariners, the head mariners, decided they wanted to be on this side of the river. It's the sunny side, it's the south facing side, and you can get up to 14 hours of sunshine, not on a day like today, but on a sunny day, up to 14 hours of sunshine on the sunny side of the river. So you've got a number of influences on flushing. You've got the Dutch influence, you've got the sea and the mariners and their money, their influence. You've also got the Cornish aspect and the influence that that brought to the village. So it's a most amazing little village with lots of different styles of houses and some very, very nice with gable ends, big, huge properties. It's normally like a lawnmower or a hedge trimmer or some sort of circular saw thing going on, isn't it? Quite a cacophony that was, wasn't it? See them up there? Yeah, there. On top of the church. So near, it's those two from Cornish walking trails. What are they doing in flashing? <laughs> All I can say is I'm glad I'm wearing my hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Andrew, so we have been to flashing before. We have. And you picked up this book some time ago, didn't you? This book is amazing. Is There's it? There's so much information in here, as you can see from all these tabs. Yeah, so don't I... worry, we're not using all of those, no. are we? <laughs> no. But there is one I wanted to share with you. There we go. So Flushing. Yeah. It's an unusual name, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It says in here there's at least three places in the world called Flushing. So you've got one close by here, in, another one in Cornwall, which is in St Anthony in Monique. Yes. And it says there's a Flushing in New York. Oh, really? Yeah. And then there's also a um, place called uh, Blislingen in Holland. That's easily said. Which was known as Flushing. Okay. And it also says in here that before New York was known as New York, it was known as New Amsterdam. Interesting. Yeah. Some of these houses are amazing, aren't they? They're beautiful. This They're all here. individual. Beautiful, isn't it? It's called John Bull House. <gasps> oh. I yeah. do know that John Bull was one of the packet captains. Oh, a sea captain. Yeah, a sea captains. And a lot of the sea captains had their homes here in Flushing. Instead of in Falmouth. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, whether this was his home or it's just been called that, I don't know. Possibly. Probably. Was. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't read that, but Didn't you read it no. from cover to cover? <laughs> So they're vertical. The way that they've been built is vertical. And then you get sections that are like horizontal. And if you look over there, it's kind of flip-flopping between the vertical and the horizontal back to the vertical. 
So all of that would have been reclaimed from the swampy marsh bed. Have you got your book out again, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's got a nice picture of the it Dutch is. key there. Yeah. So it says vertical stones with horizontal uh, keys of bigger, heavier stones were typical of Dutch key building um, from the 17th century. Oh, OK. Yeah. And it says the design enabled seawater to be absorbed into the stonework during heavy seas, reducing its impact. Ah. Um, the village keys remain firmly in place three centuries after being constructed by the Dutch engineers. Well, yeah, they are phenomenal, aren't yeah. they? It hardly looks as though stone has shifted in all those years. Quite amazing. OK, so they probably absorbed some of the energy of the wave and it's allowed to kind of trickle down through the stones instead of hitting just a brick face that would gradually wear away. You can actually see where the new pointing has already gone. Gone, I can tell by the grin on your face. <laughs> it's my second favourite story from this book. Oh, okay. okay. At Mary Pryor's shop in the building now known as Fortunes, yes. a parrot used to shout, Shop Mary! whenever the doorbell rang. Village children used to enjoy opening and shutting the door just to hear the parrot yell for the owner. The youngsters thought it was great fun, said one villager. I'm sure they did. They need to change their door knocker to a parrot then, don't they? That looks very old, actually. Oh, Might yeah. be the original. Shall I give it a No, one? please don't. Shop Mary! <laughs> Isn't this just the prettiest main street you've ever seen? And the seaside colours, they've just been adopted by the house owners, I think most of them now are holiday lets, aren't they? They do look pretty. Look at this, look, 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 look. Go on, can you cast any light on that then? That's 72 Delft Cottage and it looks like tiles actually in the wall. I can, this wonderful book tells us that it's a historic link with the Netherlands. Okay. And it says an example of Dutch influence in flushing blue and white Delft tiles depicting sailing ships are embedded in a cottage wall in Trapuces Road. Fittingly, the property is known as Delft Cottage. Delft is a picturesque city in southern Holland, famous for its ceramics industry, and specifically its trademark blue and white pottery. I think they're really pretty, don't you? They're really pretty, aren't they? Yeah. What's next? What's next? <laughs> <laughs> Story about pies. Oh, yes! So right next door to Delft Cottage, you've got this one. It's the old bakery. Indeed, yeah, it says it. Do you know the name of the baker? <laughs> Mr. Cake Bread. <laughs> Close. Mr. Pasty. No, close. What? Mr. Beer. Oh. Mr. Beer owned the bakers. <laughs> Does that mean that the landlord in the pub was Mr. Baker? Yeah. Don't know, it's confusing. <laughs> but apparently what he used to do, he was quite a hospitable chap, and at Christmas time he would invite all of the local residents uh, to come in, and basically he would collect their cakes that they'd been making, and he would bake their cakes, their Christmas cakes for them. Oh, what, in his oven? Yeah, and there's a story of him making Christmas saffron cakes. <gasps> Um, or they would use his ovens effectively, he would bake them for But that's a traditional... They, they would make them in the yeah. house and they would bring it to him and he would bake them for them. Now I'd heard that it was quite a traditional thing to make saffron cake on the 24th of December. Ah, okay. And everybody would have their own individual ones. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so, lovely. oh, you imagine the smell coming good, out of there. Christmas cake and saffron buns and pasties and bread. <gasps> <laughs> good old Mr. Beer. <laughs> I'll come through, we have to go up the step because they have to use the curb. There we go. <laughs> the other side of the road from me is a right angle of cottages and the green one in the corner always fascinates me. How does it work? Oh, it's open. Yes. Fabulous. Yes. Look at this. Is that what you're on about? Yeah, the old Bible. The old Bible. <gasps> My goodness. It's very warm in here. Wow. So this is a, a memorial to the lady that had this little room built, and it's called the Waterman's Rest, and it was built on her instruction for their use. And there's a little summary of her life there. So she lived here initially in Flushing, married the vicar in St. Earth, and came back here to live with her two unmarried sisters until she died. 
And the house that she lived in, although it's no longer there, is up on the bowling green, which we might visit later. I like the bit on there. It says, she worried about the men who stood around the quay waiting for customers to ferry around the harbour. And the waterman's rest was built on her instructions for their use. Aww. Sweet, isn't it? It is. Now that actually links in with the walk because the walk instructions tell you now to stand on the harbour here, the harbour wall, and take the ferry back to Falmouth. But we're going to extend the walk a little bit to include our romantic love story. I know what you've been up to. <laughs> That property back goes for sale, isn't it? Have you just looked it up? Yeah. So, um, how big is it? Three bedroom. Yeah. Lounge, dining room, two bathrooms. Right. Um, will I get any change out of a million? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right then. Yeah. Oh, okay. 750. Seven, 750,000. No parking. Need deep pockets here. <laughs> Mine only comes here. Park your boat, though. Well, yeah. I'm looking for a plaque. Have you found it? I have found it, yeah. So this wall once formed a part of the Great Cellars, built in 1709 as storage for the post office packet service from 1689 to 1850. So in 1794 in Cornwall there was a massive famine. Everybody was starving. The miners came through flushing, about 400 of them, as many as the people that lived here. The women ran for their lives, they shut their doors, the children stared in awe as these men, these dirty men, walked through the street just determined that they were going to get some grain. The harbour master grabbed Buckingham, he was a little lad of eight, and he sat him on top of the grain and they began to sing a hymn. The Methodism was really, really strong in the mining community at that time. Let me just refer to the book to tell you what the hymn was. It was O oh, a Salvation, O oh, the Joyful Sound. Salvation, oh, the, joyful sound the miners knew all the words, they sang it to the end, they doffed their caps and they dispersed and it quelled a riot. So this was a four-storey tall building Yeah, apparently time. so. This is all that remains of it. Gosh. It's been massive, isn't it? Yeah. You think all those boats coming in from all over the world, and they need yeah. somewhere safe to store all of these goods before they could be distributed yes, further up the country, course. I suppose, yeah. isn't it? It's that young boy who said he was eight at the time. He was yeah. called John Silk Buckingham. Yeah, James Silk Buckingham. Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the one. I think about his brother. Um, but uh, <laughs> he had quite an interesting life. Yeah. Yeah, so he ended up, basically ended up uh, out in India. And um, he was doing a lot of survey work, apparently, out there. He, he didn't like the way that the East India Company were donating yeah. and, you know, some of the methods they were using, he, he thought were... Wrong. Were wrong, yeah. And, and he stood up and he spoke out about it. He became an MP, I think, in the end. Oh, okay. um, but he was like a social reformer, I believe. And then at the end of this road, before it takes a sharp left. Look at that view. So we're trying to come up with a joke about parrots ever since we spoke about that parrot back at that shop. Yes. And I think I finally got it. Okay. So I had a sick parrot once and I took it to the doctors because it was really quite poorly. The doctor took one look at it and prescribed some medication for it. Do you know what he prescribed? Dunno. Paracetamol. I thought so. But boom. We're just extending this walk a little bit, about a quarter of a mile to go down to Kiln Quay, where this wonderful story that I've been on about all video, this love story, we'll tell it to you there. So what would you do for love? Would you bring up a breakfast in bed, buy a rose, make her feel special? What about this then? There is a rumour, a rumor, a myth associated with this beautiful Tudor style mansion behind me. And the story is that in about 1919, a woman from Sussex who fell in love with a farmer sea captain was torn between her devotion to him and her equally powerful devotion to her original home in the home counties. As a compromise, she agreed to marry the sea captain if he would move that house brick by brick to Cornwall and they placed it on one of the most desirable areas in Falmouth. So the love-struck couple were Miss Joan Beach 
and Captain uh, Wheatley Cobb. Did you say Joan Beach? Joan Beach, yeah. She moved a house near a beach. Joan <laughs> Beach, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so she only agreed to marry him if he would transfer her entire, the entire country house home. to rebuild it. Is it her childhood home? home? Oh, a family home. family home. Perhaps that's why she was so devoted to the house. Obviously, loved her a lot. <laughs> what a gesture of romance, isn't it? Somebody <laughs> rebuild her house. <laughs> Not everyone believes the story, but isn't it just so romantic to think that someone would be so devoted that they would rebuild their house hundreds of miles away? I think it's just oh, yeah, lovely. The property is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So beautiful. it doesn't actually look like a typical Cornish type of old no, property, does it? Let's it, get looks, it, in shot it looks like a Tudor mansion. timber. Yeah, half timbered type of building, structure, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. And it's got clay roof tiles, which is, although the one behind you as well has, doesn't it? But normally in Cornwall they're slate, aren't they? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I think this possibly was transferred and rebuilt here, because it was out of keeping what would have actually been here. And they reckon this yeah. property is, could be 500 odd years old originally. Wow. this myth this folklore is true if you know or you think you know pop it in the comments let us know what you think tell us what would you do for love <laughs> <laughs> has been a royal charter since 1672 to carry passengers and livestock to and from Falmouth. The ferry was originally rowed but now motors, humans and dogs, strictly no cattle, over to the Prince of Wales Pier in Falmouth. We've done it. We've done it. <laughs> Back in Falmouth. We started in Falmouth, took a train to Penryn, walked all the way down the creek to Flushing. Yeah, and a ferry back here to Prince of Wales Pier in Falmouth. I've loved today. What was your favourite bit? <laughs> I enjoyed the ferry ride, actually. Yeah, I did too. And I love the love story about relocating an entire house, brick by brick or timber by half timber. That's a commitment, isn't it? 400 miles, whatever, yeah. <laughs> from Sussex. <laughs> Incredible. So hope you've enjoyed today's video. The walk was taken from? Uh, Cornwall Life magazine. Yes, and it's um, available online, isn't it? It is, yes, and I think it's about a three and a half mile walk. We made it a little bit longer. Yeah, we're going down to the romantic house. <laughs> yeah, a lovely day, so I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. Yeah, I think I would give it a nine as well. Solid nine. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Till we'll next, see time. You next time. Bye. Bye.